Good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Communion using Order 2 uh, Common Worship or um, Book of Common Prayer, as uh, many of us know it. My name's Stephen Partridge, I'm the vicar here at St Mary's Church, Elitcher Matravers, uh, and I hope uh, that uh, the last few days have gone well for you. Um, I'm recording this a few days in advance, partly because I'm on annual leave, but also because um, I won't be at the service. Uh, there will be a service that, uh, that goes, uh, that, that uh, is going on as this uh, service is streaming, but I won't be present in church. So uh, uh, it is the 5th of June. It's 8 o'clock as we go live. But I'm recording this before the bank holiday. So I hope and pray that all has gone well for Our Majesty and the uh, various events that are going around across the country, uh, but also for you, wherever you are, the local events that maybe you're part of. Uh, it is an incredible achievement, isn't it, to have, uh, to have led the, the country to have been the, our, our monarch reigning for, for 70 years. So many of us, as I pointed out a few months ago, have never known uh, another, another monarch. Uh, and I know some of you mentioned that you remember uh, her, um, her, her consecration, her, her enthronement, and... Uh, I uh, pray that this is a good, uh, a good experience again for you, seeing the, the, the 70 years uh, uh, anniversary. That might make you feel a little bit old, I don't know. But uh, So we remember the Queen every, every week, uh, do we not, in this uh, service, so it's, uh, uh, we'll continue with that. Uh, I think there are a few, one or two special prayers, but I'm not, not uh, aware of any that, that quite properly fit in with this service. So uh, uh, we'll continue to, to remember as we do. It's also Pentecost Sunday as well. Uh, so we're, um, we're remembering the coming of the Holy Spirit as well. Well, that comes through our, our readings. Uh, and I'll speak a little bit about uh, that, but also uh, our gospel reading. So, uh, uh, yes, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to, uh, to connect up with God and connect up with us here. Uh, there's only, uh, there's, only, there's, only uh, there's usually uh, 10, 15 people who, who connect up with this stream. We never really went far, or that was fine. Uh, I pray that it will be a blessing to you, uh, wherever you are, whether you're local or, or further afield, uh, and that we can, um, yeah, we can connect with the, with the liturgy and then with our Lord this morning. So uh, let's begin with a moment's quiet as we do, uh, using this first Lord's Prayer. Say it to in ourselves, in our hearts, uh, as we come before God and recognize that, that he has never not been present uh, to us. Uh, and then I'll draw us together with the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. So we pray for our queen, our queen who has set, uh, uh, set an amazing example of dedicated service, but also a strong uh, uh, faith connected in with uh, an inspiration of, uh, by following Christ. And, and she's referenced that a number of times, particularly recently. So almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our queen and governor. And she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honor and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. 
collect for this the day of Pentecost. God, who at this time didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people by sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the, that same Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse, and recounts that first Pentecost occasion. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house while they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and the signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here endeth the first lesson. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 8th verse of chapter 14. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for me anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. So we declare our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, 
begotten, not made. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. offer a few uh, thoughts for today. Lord, take my words, speak through them, take our minds, think through them, take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. In our gospel reading, Philip says, show us the Father. And I guess at some time we'd all like a bit of reassurance that God is truly there. Uh, and listening to us, uh, and he's there with his hand on, on the earth and his hand on our, on our lives. Jesus explains uh, uh, that seeing him is to see the Father. We might reflect that even seeing Jesus' ministry, his, his mission, his miracles, uh, so many still did not turn to him and believe in him. In fact, some turned very much against him, even one of his very own who had traveled with him through uh, the whole of that time. The disciples struggled when Jesus was not around. But once they'd waited and prayed, and once uh, the Holy Spirit fell on them, as we heard in our uh, first reading today, there was no stopping them. What uh, an incredible change. Peter, the man who never really made a speech in his life, oh yes, he's blurted out a number of times through the gospel, but never to stand up in front of a group of people like that. Uh, empowered, encouraged, assured of God's presence, of the truth of the gospel. They know uh, the spirit of truth, uh, as is mentioned it was energizing them and inspiring them. And uh, this movement that had been focused on one man was now going to be represented by thousands and, and hundreds of thousands and millions across the globe. That is uh, what Jesus, I think, is talking about when he says, you will do greater things. Well, he, uh, his ministry was focused just on him as he moved around that area. But now... Uh, and that he comes uh, by his spirit, teaches the truth and the way and the life to, to those who connect with his Holy Spirit. Now uh, the gospel message truly takes off across the world. And the sum of this, this whole, all these who carry this good news message are able to care, to help, to, to forgive, to show God's love across the world the world and they're all led by the spirit of truth the spirit of Jesus that help us to obey his teachings that help us to connect with the father that help us to be assured of his love for us I wonder where he'll take us or who he'll take us to today Let's spend a few moments in quiet and let the Holy Spirit speak to us, if he will, to move our hearts, to assure us of his presence with us.
Holy Spirit, you are our advocate, our counselor, our carer, our comforter. You are the one that connects us to the words of Jesus, to the, to the works of his, and to the love of the Father. May we know that love in our hearts today and overflow as we connect up with others. By your spirit and in your name. Amen. Come now to a time where we would have collected off a tree. We don't do that in these times, but we are grateful for those that continue to support the church. Uh, as I uh, uh, and, it, and it's uh, uh, my my job as vicar here is to try and maintain the the building and to encourage people to come and share in fellowship and worship with us here. Uh, uh, and so we've we've got the the maintenance uh, side of things, but also the mission and the ministry. And we're thankful for all those who continue to support us in in each of those aspects of church life. Uh, thinking about maintenance, I can see uh, some works that have been going on at the back corner of our church. Uh, 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 memorial that, that we that's been there and a little bit damaged, probably damaged back in the uh, uh, back in the Civil War times. I think it dates from before then. Uh, it's being uh, restored uh, as we speak and uh, as I speak, or in these weeks. So uh, yeah, uh, there's evidence of, of of maintenance work going on, uh, but also we're we're pleased to be connecting in with. Uh, events that are going on across the, across the village this weekend and pray that, again, our ministry and our mission will continue to uh, connect up with others. Uh, these verses remind us of what it is to be able to share uh, the blessings we receive with others. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon the earth where the rust and moth doth corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither rust nor moth doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. All things come of thee and of thine own do we give thee. Whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him. And so, Lord, we thank you for the love of God that dwells in each one of us. And we know by the Spirit and inspires us to share the blessing we receive by blessing others. Lord, we pray that the gifts given, both financial but also time uh, and, uh, and talents, that each would be multiplied greatly in your hands and would go to bring more to know the glory of your name and the love you have for the world. Amen. So we pray for the whole state of Christ Church, militant in earth, remembering uh, our, our Queen, especially today, but also we call to mind in a moment's quiet those other people, places, situations that God has put on our hearts and, and in our minds to offer in prayer. So in a moment's quiet, we bring those before him. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, 
that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially uh, to all those connecting up with this stream uh, today, uh, as it goes live and, and later on today, and, and so on. And with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator, an advocate. Amen. The, ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith. Take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, of his great mercy, hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose most true promise the Holy Ghost came down as at this time from heaven with a sudden great sound, as it might have been a mighty wind in the likeness of fiery tongues, lighting upon the apostles to teach them and to lead them to all truth, giving them both the gift of diverse languages and also boldness with fervent zeal constantly to preach the gospel unto all nations, whereby we have been brought out of darkness and error into the clear light and true knowledge of thee and of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. 
We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures, our bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. So draw near with faith, spiritually receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for each one of us. Amen. If Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O faithful God, who did, promise, did fulfill the promise of Easter by sending to us thy Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of eternal life, open our lips by the same Spirit that every tongue may tell of thy glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we must heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, so have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate, in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. And are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Do stand, if you're comfortable and able to do so, as we say the Gloria together. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, 
We worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, thank you for connecting up with me here today. Bless you in uh, whatever celebrations you've got going on or, or, uh, or whatever you might be, however you might be linking in with the Jubilee. We've got a service at 9.30 that will be uh, live streamed as well. We're hoping to have our choir back for the first time in over two years, uh, leading us in the singing and uh, they'll have an anthem, I think, connecting in with uh, Jubilee as well. So we're continuing our celebrations. But uh, whatever uh, you're doing, may you be blessed in that and we receive God's blessing as we close. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst us and remain with us and those we love and pray for now and forevermore. Amen.